So we're seeing a new villain in One Punch Man that's possibly even stronger than Cosmic Fear Garo because he somehow absorbed Cosmic Fear Garo's power? Yeah, that's right, because this chapter opens up with a flashback of us seeing Saitama defeating Cosmic Fear Garo from like two years ago, you know, in our time. And at that time when he was defeated, his cosmic -ness God power smoke stuff like seeped out of his face. And as Blast was witnessing this, he explained that at that time he was trying to reduce like the cosmic radiation that was coming from Garo by using a gravitational field to send it into like another dimension. But it also turns out that, like we said, as Garo's uh, cosmicness, God smoke was coming out of him, it was seeping into that singularity as well. But in that singularity was Empty Void, the leader of the ninja village. So we had no idea that he was going to be here because in the previous chapter we saw that he had apparently awakened from a 15 year coma that Blast put him in and that he sent like this welcoming attack to the Hero Association with the Dimension Slash which was incredibly powerful like it probably could have nuked the entire Hero Association if Blast didn't save it. But now we're seeing that he was able to do that in the first place because of what he had done prior to meeting them there after Saitama defeated Cosmic Fear Garo because he sucked up all of that cosmic power that Garo had or had lost. And we see that he like is emaciated at this point because I guess he was still recovering or coming out of that coma. But now sucking that up has like buffed him up and he looks different than he did in the previous version. He has like a mask or something maybe. But in response to this blast like fires off a freaking Dragon Ball Z key blast thing at him. Like we've never seen blast do this before. This is wild. This is, I suppose, some kind of energy manipulation or something. And Empty Void, with his new strength, is able to just cut it. I guess this is also his dimensional slash that he's using here, which is wild. It even shocks Blast. So yeah, this guy is unbelievably powerful, like we were talking about in the previous review. He very likely is disaster level guy in strength. As Blast continues to fight against him in this flashback, he sends like two more of these cosmic blasts through worms wormholes trying to get behind Empty Void, but Empty Void can like manipulate space by grabbing it. If you follow Jujutsu Kaisen, this is very similar to what Uro Takako's curse technique is, where he can literally grab space itself and pull it, diverting the blasts away. And then he's able to escape after that point, and that's the last time Blast had saw him before the dimensional slash was sent to the Hero Association in the previous chapter. And when we come back to real time, Blast explains it to everyone by saying that the power he took coming out of Garo made him that much stronger and he was able to revive himself. And that he is also able, of course, to move between dimensions like Blast, meaning that he can use like that singularity ability. And that since he's been making preparations while hiding in another dimension, he's going on the offensive now. And then they ask like the dimension slash, is that like a psych power? And Blast says, no, it's one of God's powers because interference from the higher dimension where God is located ignores distance, energy, and size. So yeah, time and space manipulation, which is common with God's set of powers, or at least that we've seen he's been able to give to Cosmic Fear Garo. And then he says, as to what extent it ignores them, depends on the capabilities of the subject. So yeah, obviously God's powers can't just be bestowed onto like anyone, especially at this level. Like yeah, Homeless Emperor was able to get like the energy manipulation aspect, but full control over time, space, and energy, like all aspects of the cosmos, you're really going to need an exceptional individual like Garo or with, in this case, Empty Void. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, Hofsko, because they have a new Sync Max 14-inch folding electric bike. This thing is really cool. I've never really seen anything like it before. It weighs about 42.3 pounds, and like I mentioned, it folds for an unrivaled convenience. Like, you can easily store it in the trunk of your car or just just, you know, easy keeping in your house. It has a 450 watt high powered motor that goes up to a 19 mile per hour max speed. It has 14 inch durable tires and has about a max range of 30 miles along with a 36 volt lithium ion battery. It 
also has a pedal assist mode where you can adjust speed levels from L, M to H to meet your daily need. L is an eco mode that goes about four miles per hour. M is the standard mode that goes about 12 miles per hour. And then H is sport mode for those thrilling rides when you're looking to go about 19 miles per hour. And to assist you with that, it has this great thumb throttle to where if you don't feel like pedaling or you really need to get somewhere quick, you can just hold it down and just cruise. It also has an advanced dual brake system featuring a front disc brake and a rear e-brake, which provides reliable stop distance. It also has a bright headlight and brake tail light. This is essential for riding in the city, guys. So yeah, like I said, this thing is just so great and convenient. It's perfect for the city and great for commutes. Like I personally don't have a car because I live downtown. So this thing just makes everything so much easier for me. So guys, you can get your very own Hofsco Sync Max 14 inch folding electric bike by clicking the link in my description because right now you can get the limited time deal of $50 off by using code MTV. Again, I'll have the link in the description. Thanks guys. And after hearing all of that stuff, Sitch realizes is like, oh, I have to make sure those guys are safe. You know, I'm sure hearing about the cube and how individuals can be manipulated by God made him realize it. And the people that he's thinking about are Second Gar, Metal Bat, and Child Emperor. He's thinking about them because a couple chapters back, it was revealed that they're all leaving the Hero Association to join the Neo Heroes, but they're kind of like being spies. They're not like straight up really leaving the Hero Association. They're just going over there to intercept them, essentially. That's kind of what they all agreed on. At least Child Emperor and Second Guard. Metal Bat is kind of just going there to be Second Guard's bodyguard. After this, Flashy Flash gets the letter of challenge from Sonic, which we saw before, but now in this retcon version, it's like the Hero Association is giving it to him. And he's once again challenging Flashy Flash to meet him at the original place that they had planned to make the new Ninja Village as kids. And at first, it's implied that Sonic is going to like fight him to the death because Sonic, of course, was coaxed into doing this by the Heavenly Ninja Party early on. After after Empty Void had awakened. And they wanted to either get Flashy Flash out of the picture or bring him over to God's side and make him a disciple as well. And once they figure out the logistics of things, Blast says, okay, you can go ahead, but if we all go together, it might alert Void. So go there first, and then if he appears, tap this uh, signal sender thing and it'll alarm me, and then he'll go there and, you know, fight Empty Void because Blast is like the only guy who can, aside from Saitama, of course. But it seems like Saitama's probably going to be sitting this one out, or at least I hope so. Because he does say that since Blast is on alert for this stuff, he's just going to go chill with Monaco and eat curry udon. So yeah, Saitama might be out of this arc for the remainder of it, possibly. But then for the rest of the chapter, we go over the stuff that we had already went over before in the previous retcon dark, where we're getting more flashbacks of Sonic and Flashy Flash as children in the Ninja Village. And once again, it comes up that Sonic was born in the Ninja Village. And at that time, it made me think that Sonic might be the son of Empty Void, which I still think is a possibility, but things have been changed a little bit with the Celestial Rock Cave stuff, whether that's still a thing, and if Empty Void is the only one who can open it, and maybe that's Sonic's significance in this series later on, I don't know. I don't even know if Empty Void is still inherently possibly an Esper, which means that Sonic could be in some way. It's still, like I said, a possibility, but we're just gonna have to wait for a little bit more information to see how things are changing in the upcoming chapters, I suppose. But going forward, Sonic, of course, reveals that he had a dream of making a new, better Ninja Village, where it doesn't just raise a bunch of psychopaths to be mindless assassins. And he shows on a map where he wants to make it. That, of course, is the place where they are going to meet to have their quote-unquote final battle. So they eventually meet there, and they draw their swords, and they exchange their words with Flashy Flash mainly wanting to know if this order came from Empty Void. He's trying to gain if Sonic has gone over to his side. And Sonic's like, that's a stupid question. This has nothing to do with that fossil. I just simply remember when I ran into you the other day that we never settled who is stronger. And that reassures Flashy Flash. It's like, okay, it's still Sonic. He hasn't gone over to Empty Void. He hasn't gone over to God. He's kind of just doing this of his own volition. 
And he reiterates to himself that like, yeah, there's no way that we compete with Empty Void because he's remembering back to the dimensional slash and how big it was. So then he thinks at this point, he could just give Sonic this final battle so that he could leave him with no regrets. Because of course, it still hasn't come to fruition yet that they are both kind of like wanna be friends subconsciously, but they have to get like this fight out of their system first to realize that they're both better working together than against each other. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. And also let me know if you think Empty Void is now disaster level god. If you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.